Why do you think social anxiety is so big now? I, I see it in a lot of, I, you know what I notice in kids? When I used to walk in a room and I'd say to my dad, even as a young kid, my dad was a Marine drill instructor, Korean World War II, 13 years in the Marine Corps, probably has Michael, my brother, the legendary, who you've Michael, worked with, Michael. who, by the way, just got inducted into the International Sports Hall of Fame. Yeah, he's a bad he, he, Yeah, he's yeah, great. It never ends. It's awesome for him. So I'd walk in a room and I'd say, hi, dad. He goes, son. Project your voice. Let them know you're in the room, right? Okay, Dad. All right. And, you know, son, look him in the eye. Shake their hands. Look him in the eye. When you talk to a man, look him in the eye. If he doesn't look you in the eye, something's wrong, right? So, I mean, kids do that. I notice the kids now, they, and I, and again, I love children. You know, I help raise two boys, Henry and Rupert. They're, they're about to be 11 and one's 14. It's the greatest experience of my life, helping raise these two boys as their godfather, their uncle, and second father. You know, and I put a lot into it, but I'm noticing that kids look down. They don't look you in the eye. They don't communicate. They stand across from each other. They're sitting on the couch like they're doing here and they're not looking at each other and talking. They're texting to each other, right? It's not teaching that. In, not, I don't know if the proper term is intimacy, but just communication skills. You know, you walk in to get a job. Am I going to hire you if you walk in my office looking at the floor, not making eye contact with me? Not making proper communication. Well, I, have you ever seen me with sunglasses on? You? Yeah. You ever seen me? With sunglasses? No, I never have. Wait, eight years. You no, 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 never. No. Don't believe it. Where I came from, you're not allowed to wear sunglasses. <laughs> Why? What happened if you did? They smack them off. Really? Yeah. <laughs> really? The town I grew up in, nobody wears sunglasses. Interesting. No earrings, no tattoos. Earrings, I can understand. Nothing. Yeah. Nothing. The wow. Society I grew up in, you walk into a room with sunglasses, somebody would smack them off your face. And when did that change? What about right now? You go back there now. Do they have, are they tattooed and earringed and sunglassed I mean, up? The kids I hang up are, are still straight like that. Straight like just that. Just a mentality. It was this way of being that was just, it's like the Bronx. I don't believe in glass. Sunglasses. It's like the Bronx tale. When you come in my house, you take those fucking things off. Well, Unless let... you're fucking Steve McQueen. Uh -huh. Don't put Steve's fucking sunglasses on. All right? uh, Not no, around me. You want to hear a quick Steve McQueen sunglass story? Go ahead. Okay. One of the best at, one of the best movies McQueen ever made, where he people think he really did a true acting turn, because like you know, I was good friends with him, really good friends for the last six years of his life. I surfed in front of his house every day. He was my neighbor a quarter mile away from me in Malibu, and he had a great surf spot in front of his house. When he made the Thomas Crown Affair, right, great movie. which he dressed up and all, he wore these blue lens per sole glasses sunglasses which they make today they're the steve mcqueen version they fold right so his last wife barbara minty auctioned off a bunch of his materials and it was the sunglasses from the thomas crown affair and they sold for thirty five thousand yeah. dollars okay Jeez. nobody knows this but when you walked in his house he had a little wicker basket by the front door there were four pair of those sunglasses in the wicker basket right <laughs> so like chad is his son is one of my best friends who has auctioned off a lot of material um his jacket from bullet Valued the one on the poster, the great movie Bullet, valued at eight hundred thousand dollars. Went on auction. The auction went up to seven hundred twenty-five thousand, and so they didn't sell it because that's the reserve. It had to get eight hundred thousand. Well, Chad told me that that's chances are were not the original sunglasses from. The, sorry if anybody's listening that bought this. I'm not trying to get me in trouble, but it was probably not the original sunglasses. His dad had a. I remember myself. He had a little wicker basket right there with all the the glasses. Now. Uh, I, I actually own the poster of the Thomas Crown Affair, which, what, do you remember the movie? Yes. And then they, they remade it. They remade it with, remade with it. Pierce Brosnan, who, great job. Right. Good movie. Check. There's a scene in that movie that, that like when Sam Peckinpah made a movie called The Wild Bunch, it changed the way violence Tremendous. was perceived. Yes, yes, Tremendous yes. movie. One of the great greatest, movie. One of the hundred greatest movies of all time. A, a story about men and honor, even those who were criminals, but story, I can recite every line from that film. I've seen it over 200 times. Getting back to uh, before I lose track of what I'm saying, where was I at? Darn it. You have the poster for the Thomas Crown Affair. Yeah, the Thomas Crown Affair. So the scene in the Thomas Crown Affair when he and Faye Dunaway are playing chess. And if you remember how provocatively she would touch the chess pieces. This was big stuff back then. This was very risque, right? Then they kissed each other and the camera went 360 degrees around them as they kissed with open mouth kisses. That's the first open mouth kiss ever in Hollywood. That's what you know changed the art of kissing. It's one of the at that time considered what year was an Thomas erotic Crown scene. Affair? Look up Thomas Crown Affair. I'm gonna guess when I met Steve in seventy 
four for the first time. He just got done doing, or getaway. 73, The Getaway. Just got the done getaway. doing The Getaway. I met him and Alan McGraw 68. walking in. 68, I was going to say. Yeah, 68. So that's when that changed. You know, there's certain there's certain films, whether it's Orson Welles back, you know, with uh, one of his original movies, they're trendsetters. You know, Tarantino, he changes film. You know, there's certain scenes, certain films that just change the way films are made. And that had one little aspect to it. But The Jacket in Bullet, the point I was trying to make is I'm going back and forth on subjects here. Steve gave me a jacket. That was a Brooks Brothers jacket. Steve gave me a jacket when I was a kid. Same jacket, right? But it wasn't the one worn in the movie. I wish I kept that jacket. A little certificate of authenticity. I don't know why. Being the big collector of memorabilia that I am today, I vintage movie posters, you name it. But that jacket probably, even though he didn't wear it in a movie, be worth $150,000, $200,000 today. The fire suit in the movie Le Mans. Remember he made the... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Le Mans, the, the car race. The car, car racing thing. The fire suit he wore underneath his race suit did auction off for seven hundred fifty thousand oh dollars. The God. Tag Heuer watch that he wore on his wrist also auctioned off for seven hundred fifty. The thing he wore in the Towering Inferno. I oh. read that the hat, the, the hat, the fireman's hat, hat. Yeah, he wore went for like six hundred. That don't quote me. No, that's but I remember reading it going. Jesus, this had to be 10 years ago before I even knew you were involved with McQueen. And stuff. Anything's possible. I've seen his stuff go. Yeah, the some... Towering Inferno, a yeah. fire hat, and something else that he did, I remember reading, went off big, big time. That's... Well, Ford, Ford just came out with the And Steve... what do you do? You take it home and hide it? <laughs> I was going to say. Put it in your closet? They just, uh, <coughs> people pay people pay money for crazy things. There was just a lock of hair, uh, Marilyn Monroe's lock of hair, a lock of hair. Just sold for sixteen thousand dollars. If it's two in the afternoon and you ain't high, go fuck yourself. Get out of my face. I want you around me like I want cancer in my ball sack. You know what I'm saying? You're gonna come around here looking at me with your fucking white eyes, thinking that you know I'm gonna re I'm gonna reform. Go fuck yourself. My morning starts at five thirty a.m. Either you're there or you're square. You know what I'm saying?